And we are looking towards Russia now, where President Vladimir Putin has acknowledged for the first time that radical Islamists carried out Friday's attack on a concert hall near Moscow. Uh, it killed more than 130 people. Four men from Tajikistan have now been charged with carrying out an act of terrorism after appearing before a court in Moscow on Sunday. In the wake of the massacre, Putin accused Ukraine of being involved, even as a branch of the so-called Islamic State claimed it was responsible for the assault. In remarks at a Kremlin meeting, Putin said the attack intended to sow panic among Russians. We know the crime was committed by radical Islamists who follow an ideology the Islamic world has been fighting for centuries. We're also seeing the United States has been using various channels to convince their satellites and other countries that according to their intelligence, there's no trace of Kyiv in the terror attack in Moscow. The bloody attack was committed by Islamists from the Islamic State Organization, which is banned in Russia. We know who committed this crime against Russia and its people. We want to know who ordered it. Now let's bring in Roman Goncharenko. He's uh, DW's Eastern Europe editor, joins us uh, from our studios in Bonn. Roman, how dangerous is this claim from Vladimir Putin that Ukraine was operationally involved in the Moscow attack? Well, yes, it is dangerous. It's important to say that we haven't seen any evidence supporting the claim that Ukraine had anything to do with it. So um, the, the only remarks of Vladimir Putin and uh, some of his uh, uh, other Russian officials had is that they were heading towards Ukraine. But those people um, who are suspected um, uh, terrorists uh, could also be heading towards Belarus, the neighboring uh, former Soviet Republic. So no hard evidence uh, mm. there so far. Uh, and it's dangerous because let's look at uh, what, what's, uh, what's um, happening in Russia. In, 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 so what's the background, so to say? So uh, the attack happened a few days after the presidential election in Russia. Vladimir Putin won it as expected and um, has now free hand. It's not that he had to worry about the result, but still he now is free maybe to to some more radical moves um, uh, against Ukraine, but also internally in Russia itself. Um, and it also happened after we've seen um, an escalation on the Ukrainian-Russian border with some Russian fighters who are fighting on the Ukrainian side, entered the neighboring um, region of Belgorod, and r the Russian state look we looked weak at that point. So um, uh, Vladimir Putin, as well as head of state, looked weak because he couldn't protect the Russian citizens. And it is dangerous because he now could try to show that he's not weak. Now, is that what he's trying to achieve with these comments, suggesting uh, um, that he is not weak and that he has things under control? And also, has he done this type of thing before? Well, I can't remember of a, senior situ a similar situation before, at least on, not on this scale, after such a um, murderous attack with over 100 uh, casualties. Uh, uh, I think internally, for Russia itself, He's trying to distract public opinion from the idea that uh, uh, the Russian secret services some um, actually failed to protect the Russian people because there was a warning, we know that, by the United States just a few days before the attack that such an attack could happen. Uh, it specifically mentioned that an attack uh, could be targeting a concert. Um, then he's also trying to distract attention probably from the um, uh, anger of Russian citizens towards migrants. And this is a very old, uh, old issue for Russia. So there were clashes uh, between Russians, uh, uh, Russian people and migrants from Central Asia, from former Soviet Republic before. And this is something very dangerous uh, for Russia itself, being destabilized from the inside. Uh, so there is, there is um, probably a point there. And of course, he's trying to direct all negative emotions by the Russian people towards Ukraine, a country that he's waging a war, a big war, uh, for over two years now. Let's get the very latest from DW's Yuri Reschetto joining us today from Riga. Uh, Yuri, several days after this attack, we finally see Putin acknowledging what countries like the U.S. and France had been, had been saying all along about who carried out this attack. Why do you think we've heard Putin make these comments now? 
Well, look, uh, Claire, um, the Russian state is good at showing strength after the facts and overreacting. But I think the Russian state is obviously not good at preventing serious crimes in advance and admitting mistakes later. And Putin wants now, finally, to show a strong man, a strong president, a strong politician who acts decisively. Uh, you know, Putin is seemingly finally, you said it, admitting what others before him have long since recognized, that the terrorist attack was carried out by radical Islamists. The US intelligence services warned the Kremlin of this weeks ago. The credibility of the ISIS video was also considered yeah, to be very, very high from the beginning. The whole world was talking about the Islamists. Only Putin uh, pretended that it was not clear who the perpetrators were. And now that the four men have been presented to the court, Putin simply had to ch no choice but to finally yeah, acknowledge the responsibility of ISIS. At the same time, he is drawing attention to Ukraine. Why? Because he wants to reject the accusation that he didn't recognize the danger. Because, I remember, not only did he ignore the American warnings about uh, the attack, um, but he also uh, publicly made fun of it day, a day before. A head of state who makes fun of terror warnings and then faces this terror in his country the next day. What else? Is he supposed to say? And this is where Ukraine comes into play because the entire Russian official narrative in recent years has been focused on the, right, uh, on the fight against the supposed neo-Nazis in Ukraine. It makes perfect sense now for Putin to pick up this trail again. And you're right, I'd like to see if we can uh, take a listen to Putin's comments in which, as you say, he is appearing to strongly suggest that Ukraine is still somehow involved. It's a scare tactic, as I've previously said. And the question immediately arises as to who benefits from this. This atrocity can only be a link in a whole series of attempts by those who since 2014 have been at war with our country via the hands of the neo-Nazi regime in Kyiv. And the Nazis, as is well known, have never been squeamish about using the dirtiest and most inhumane means to achieve their goals. So, Yuri, tell us more about what Putin is thinking here based on what we just heard him saying there. Well, first, Putin uh, provides no concrete evidence. Many believe that Putin is now looking for a justification for the escalation um, of the situation at the front lines, perhaps even for a new mobilization in Russia. But I don't think uh, that anything will change in the course of the war. I think that this statement by the president has the one and only aim to distract the population at home from Putin's own mistakes. Uh, Russians are deeply divided, although Putin never gets tired of claiming the opposite and uh, yeah, saying how united Russians are. But the reason for the division is years of systematic brainwash by the state-controlled mass media. Uh, since 2014, uh, since the Maidan revolution in Kiev, they have been telling Russians every day that Ukraine has been manipulated by the West, that neo-Nazis have seized power in Ukraine, and that the West wants to invade Russia one day with Ukraine's hand. Uh, if you tell someone something every day, regardless of whether it's true or not, at some point the person you are telling it uh, to will start to believe it. And uh, there is a significant number of Russians who believe exactly that in Russia. But... There are also other people. Uh, they certainly have a lot of questions for their president now. And there are the elites who know exactly what is going on in the country. And I think Putin is more afraid of them than of ordinary Russians. Uri Selutsevich is a deputy director of the Russia and Eurasia program and head of the Ukraine Forum at Chatham House, a think tank in London. Uh, Russia, how dangerous is Putin's claim here that Ukraine is at least operationally involved in the Moscow attacks? Well, to be honest, Ukraine is already in a full-fledged invasion for the third year in a row. So uh, there's very little that uh, Putin can do to retaliate uh, on this uh, completely bogus claim that he is not doing already. And just to remind the listeners, as you know, the terrorist attack took place in Moscow, two massive missile strikes hit Ukrainian cities, hit Ukrainian infrastructure. The uh, large town of Kharkiv, which is around a million inhabitants, is currently without water, electricity, heating, and there are still cold temperatures. So Putin is already waging a genocidal type of war with torture and, you know, mass murders. 
in the cities that Ukrainian uncovered uh, when they liberated. And to be honest, there's not much new up his sleeve. Now, what is he trying to achieve by selling this message? Well, I think President Putin is, is very clear from the very beginning that he's not only, you know, fighting Kiev, but he's fighting the West. Uh, it's interesting, this uh, question about who has ordered this terrorist attack, and that actually implies not only Ukraine, or may imply not only Ukraine. He completely dis, uh, ignored the warnings that were coming from the United States, the UK, about the imminent terrorist attack, again, calling them uh, open black, blackmail and an effort to sow destabilization and panic. So he may, I mean, for him, the enemy is the West, it's United States, and Ukraine he sees just as a proxy theater of war um, in, in, his, uh, uh, in his actually plan to push United States out of Eastern Europe. Now, Russian media is, of course, outraged. Um, how could he harness that outrage as justification to do, what do you think? Well, he will do everything to harness hatred. Hatred, first of all, to Ukrainians, because Russian soldiers need to kill Ukrainians, need to torture them. So that helps him to uh, dehumanize Ukrainians further. Second, he will need to mobilize more men to reconstitute his force because his army is taking heavy, heavy casualties. More than a thousand men, you know, a day on Ukrainian battlefields, making only incremental uh, gains on the territory. We, we do know from leaked information uh, from inside the Russian state media that Kremlin has instructed all the propagandists to actually emphasize this connection to Ukraine so, um, you know, in, in his new term in, in office, Putin will only want to have more war uh, and more violence vis-a-vis -vis his own people and also vis-a-vis -vis neighboring countries. Orisia Lutsevich uh, there from the Chatham House think tank. Thank you very much.